Hello and welcome to Chabot News for December 4th, 2019. My name is Romualdo Silverio and in today's news, we will be covering bar trains and the recent bomb cyclones. In entertainment news, our entertainment correspondent Mario Cruz will talk about J-Lo's Super Bowl halftime show. In sports, Will Carter will cover the 49ers and their bittersweet loss. And in our top five, our very own Elisha Young will tell us the top five holiday movies. All that and more coming up on Chabot News. In national news, China has retaliated against President Trump's support of pro-democracy protesters in China. China hit back hard, stating they would no longer allow U.S. ships or planes to have access to semi-autonomous cities. Beijing was outraged when news broke of President Trump signing a bill for Hong Kong that received near unanimous support in Congress. Chinese officials have stated that the U.S. violate international law for intervening in Chinese internal affairs. Chinese retaliation as of Monday notably appeared limited to the U.S. institution's access to Hong Kong. The U.S. military's decades-old access to Hong Kong has served as a significant pass part of its strategy towards East Asia in recent years. In other news, Google is under fire for removing campaign ads for the re-election of President Donald Trump. The first censorship of these ads were seen in YouTube and its parent company, Google, removing over 320 20 video campaign ads for violating company policy. Just, exa just exactly what company policy was violated has yet to be disclosed, leaving it unclear as to why they were taken down. This has led to other companies such as Twitter to completely ban political ads. As of late, tech companies have received scrutiny over how they have handled political advertisements, and we will have to see how these tech company powerhouses handle future political advertisements. Now we go to our entertainment correspondent, Mario Cruz, for what's happening in entertainment. Thanks, Ron Waldo. Jennifer Lopez is getting ready for her halftime show and next year's Super Bowl. JLo is a busy woman. Not only is she geared up for the show, but she is also promoting her recent movie, Hustlers. It will be making an appearance this weekend on SNL. As for the halftime show, she can't give away too much about the performance. Yet, she did not forget the true message of the halftime show. She said, quote, For me, I'm obviously going to try to put together the best show that I can, but it's also about having fun. Just being there, staying present in the moment, and enjoying all the wonderful things that are happening. End quote. Are you excited to see what JLo has in store for the halftime show? Olivia Jade is coming back to YouTube. She is the daughter of Lori Loughlin, who played Auntie Becky on the show Full House. On December 1st, Olivia released a two-minute video titled Hi Again. In this video, she expressed how she cannot legally talk about the USC scandal. She said she was debating coming back to YouTube. Olivia currently has 1.94 million subscribers on YouTube, and her video has 2 million views. In this video, she explained how she was grateful for all the people who have stuck around in the nine months' absence. Olivia's video came out recently after her parents pleaded not guilty to a third charge related to the college admission scams, according to the court records. Olivia did not mention anything about her parents in the video. Do you think Olivia should come back to you too? Back to you, Ronaldo. Thanks, Mario. In local news, no more is dirty BART trains. BART is in the process of getting new trains, and today they retired their first car of the 669 total. The train car goes by 2528, which was put into service 24 years ago in 1995. These old cars have been in use since the early 70s. BAR has promised for 775 new cars to be unrolling within the next few years. Get ready for even more rain this week, as it has been reported that a second bomb cyclone will be hitting the Bay Area this week. It will be bringing heavy rain and very strong winds. The first one hit last week during Thanksgiving. So expect to be wearing your rain gear and be cautious on the roads because it will be wet and some people don't know how to handle the weather. But when you're inside from the rain this winter, here's Alicia with the top five Christmas movies to watch while you're at home. Thank you, Ron Waldo. Today's top five is going to give you the past, the present, and the future yet to come. The hit book turned movie, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, has had so many renditions and with Christmas right around the corner, today's top five only makes sense to have the top five renditions of A Christmas Carol movie. Coming in at five is Ba Hum Duck, A Looney Tunes Christmas. Released in 2006, this movie brings Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, and the rest of the Looney Tunes gang back together to retell the classic novel. With Daffy Duck as Ebenezer Scrooge, you can only wonder how Daffy may portray this iconic character. Coming in at four, we got Mickey's Christmas Carol. In this 1983 rendition, you can't help but notice how cute this movie is for its time. And you really can't go wrong with the Mickey Mouse film. Number three is Mrs. Scrooge. 
starring Cicely Tyson and Katherine Hel Hel Hellman. This 1997 made-for-television Christmas movie, Addict Tea, changes the roles of Ebenezer Scrooge and Jacob Marley into female counterparts, Ebenezer Scrooge and Maud Marley. If you see the roles, I mean, to see the roles reversed is something worth watching. Number two is Disney's A Christmas Carol. The 2009 3D computer animated dark fantasy film starring Jim Carrey in a multitude of roles includes Ebenezer Scrooge as a young, middle-aged, and old man, and the three ghosts who haunt him. Jim Carrey has been one of the funniest minds if, in comedy for decades, and this movie only adds to his legacy. And coming in at number one, one of my personal faves, Scrooge. The 1988 American Christmas comedy Scrooge is a modern retelling of that follows Bill Murray as Frank Cross, a critical and selfish television executive who is visited by a succession of ghosts on Christmas Eve intent on helping him regain his Christmas spirit. If you haven't seen any of these movies today, you're missing out. That's today's top five. Back to you, Ron Waldo. Thanks, Alicia. In Chabot news, you might have noticed around campus a few boxes that read, quote, Chabot College Winter Gear Drive, end quote. You have, if you have any new or gently used coats, gloves, hats, blankets, or other winter necessities that you have lying around, now is your chance to donate them so they can be distributed at the December and January pop-up pantries. If you need help locating a donation box, you can find them in building 100, 200, 400, 700, 2100, 3900, and the STEM Center. For more info, you can visit Fresh, Cunt, Fresh Chabot on Facebook or Instagram. Donations will be collected until December 13th. To learn more about the drive, we sent our reporter Chris Reynolds to the Chabot College campus in Hayward, California to see how they are trying to fill the need for warm clothes. Chris. Well, it's that time of year again. Temperatures are getting cold outside and people are in need of one warm coat. And Chabot College is saying that they get just that. So this is the second year that we are doing the winter uh, gear drive here at Chabot College. Um, last year was the first and we had a really big success where we collected a couple hundred um, coats and this year we actually made it, we expanded it to uh, winter gear so we're also collecting scarves and mittens and um, you know uh, hats so whatever keeps people warm. So we have um, donation boxes all across the campus and they're pretty easy to see. They're all wrapped up in like Christmas wrap wrapping, um, but they're in building 100, 200, 400, 700, um, the 2000 and the 3900 building, which is the STEM center. Um, so usually um, they're in pretty central locations. You can donate up to Friday, December 13th. That's when we're going to be getting everything together and organizing it for the next pop-up pop pantry on December 17th. And so we're hope, hoping that working together we get, um, you know, we're more productive, more successful this year, and we'll continue on next year doing the same. In Hillary, California, I am Christopher Reynolds. Some people live fortune. Thank you, Chris. Now we go to the latest in sports with our correspondent, Will Carter. Thanks, Ronaldo. In today's sports news, the Niner gang is going in and going hard. Win or lose, you choose. I'm giving you a bittersweet Bay Area loss and a victory. Unfortunately, the 10-1 Niners are now 10-2, losing against the Baltimore Ravens on Sunday morning. Ladies and gents, players and pimps, these gold minor Niners were one field goal away from a tie and one touchdown from a victory. Why is this so bitter? Why is this a bittersweet victory? It's bitter because of the loss, but it's also sweet because we are the best team in the region, baby. Gold is first place, second place is silver. Never forget that. Bang, bang, Niner gang. In other sports news, California voters could get a chance next year to approve sports betting and a growing trend across the nation that has escaped Connecticut so far. The, pro the proposed constitutional amendment in California could be on the ballot in November 2020, as 18 tribes are pushing for the voters to make the decision for betting at racetracks and Indian casinos. The proposal calls for a tax of 10% on gross gambling revenues that will help pay for state regulations and mental health programs related to gambling, among other costs. Are you down for the bet? Back to you, Ron Waldo. Thank you, Will. Today in good news, a man from Oregon has just been reunited with his cat, Sasha, after she was discovered wandering the streets from 1,400 miles away from home. 
It has been five years since Sasha vanished from Victor Usov's house in Portland. The 31-year-old medical student said that he had simply let her outside one night only to have her disappear entirely. Last week, however, she was taken in as a healthy stray in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Upon scanning her microchip, the staffers at the Santa Fe Animal Shelter were so shocked to find that her owner lived so far away. But after they managed to get in contact with Usov, he confirmed that the wily six-year-old feline was indeed his missing cat. Well, I got the call. I was ecstatic, Usov said. Uh, but I was not that surprised. This cat loves adventure. Animal rights activists rejoice over the newly signed legislation that officially made animal cruelty a felony. On November 25th, President Trump signed the Preventing Animal Cruelty and Torture Act, otherwise known as PACT, into effect. The bill had already been unanimously approved on October 26th and in the Senate on November 6th. Today's vote is a significant milestone in the bipartisan quest to end animal abuse and protect our pets. This bill sends a clear message that our society does not accept cruelty against animals, said Congressman, Congressman Deutsch in a statement about the House's approval back in October. Now to Armando with a very special live report. Armando. Thank you. How's it going, you guys? I want to give a huge shout out to T. Low. Three, two, one. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Back to the studio, guys. Happy birthday, T Lo. Tom Lothian. Thank you, Armando. Oreo hasn't shown any signs of slowing down this year. If anything, Milk's favorite cookie has been busier than ever, treating us to all kinds of seasonal snacks. From cool Baskin Robbins, mint chocolate chip, to s'mores Oreos that were just perfect for around the campfire. Even more recently, they announced a re-release of Peppermint Bark Oreos. That being said, uh, Oreo released three different mystery Oreo packs, each one containing a different clue. To get to the bottom of the mystery Oreo, you had to snap up all three packs to get a full profile on the mystery flavor. So Oreo finally relieved the mystery flavor, none other than Churro Oreo. But Oreo hasn't divulged just yet when or where we can get our hands on Churro Oreos, but we can assure you it will be coming to your local major retailers sometime in 2020. A way to top off an eating journey and to recap a special moment in someone's life would be none other than a birthday cake. Having a wide arrangement of flavors and decoration that can be specifically catered to one's liking. Extravagant as one liking or as simple as one needs, birthday cakes are the way to go. Having the good old chocolate cake or even stepping outside the boundaries and going for an ice cream cake. Throwing it back to a tres leche cake or even switching it up to a mojito cake if you're 21 and over of course. With that being said, we here at KCTH would like to wish our very own Tom Lothian a happy birthday. Thank you, Tom Lothian, and a happy birthday. That is all for Chabot News this week. Thanks to all the students and staff, and especially Tom Lothian, happy birthday again, in the Mass Communications Department here at Chabot College for making this production possible. Uh, you can watch us anytime online at youtube.com slash TV. Stay tuned to KCTH Channel 27 for more Chabot TV. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.